Hey, I hope that you guys are doing well. In this video, we're going to be looking at Workhorse. It's going to be ticker symbol WKHS. Now, if you are not in the loop for Workhorse, and if you're watching this video, you probably have a general idea. But today, Workhorse secured another $70 million investment. Uh, now, this would be in senior convertible notes, which will be converted from there into common stock for the company at $19 a share. Now at the time that this information came out, that was 35% above what Workhorse was currently trading at. So that sent the stock higher for the now ninth day in a row. And when you look at this stock in comparison to where it was trading just three months ago, uh, back in March, we're up about a thousand to twelve hundred percent now across the board this is how all EV companies or the major EV companies are trading we've got Neo Nikola Motors uh, Tesla and now workhorse they're all trading over 100 percent above what they were trading in March now in this particular video we want to just look at workhorse and get an idea of some technical levels from uh, over the past couple of days to see is there more resistance, is there some support levels that we can look at, and where is the general consensus on where we are going to move as we close out this shortened trading week. So with that, let's go ahead and dive on into the chart. Again, this is going to be ticker symbol WKHS. Now, as always, I like to start on the weekly chart. So each candlestick here represents one week's worth of trading. And we actually date all the way back here to 2010, so almost a decade's worth of trading. Now, there's one important level to look at here, and that's $10 a share. You can see we opened up or IPO'd uh, right around $10 a share. And from that point on, all the way for about five to six years, there were no good returns here. The stock was down about 90% from its initial offering. And then we gathered some support. We pushed all the way up to $10 a share, actually poked through it up to about $11 a share, but then we sold off. Uh, and it wasn't until about the latter half or the mid to latter half of last year that we were actually starting to push back up. We got up to about $4 a share. And then we were kind of in this limbo between dollar and fifty cents up to about four dollars a share and now we're starting to see this big push to EV um, workhorse is getting a lot more um, uh, news related uh, topics on it and it's really starting to push people are really excited about it um, and, and it's making the headlines so with that you can see this humongous surge in the volume traded on this stock sending it again from about a dollar and fifty cents a share from March all the way up to now highs of twenty dollars today closing in around seventeen dollars and what we're really wanting to focus at is again the last couple of days of trading so I already have some levels in here um, over the past couple of days we'll actually start here on the five day five minute and then we'll move it into the one day one minute um, but really what we're looking at is Monday's trading right which we ended up seeing a double top right around $15 a share and then after hours we traded right around $15 a share as we pushed into today we saw a nice surge pre-market all the way up to about $17.75 roughly from there we pulled back down but notice that we didn't come all the way down to $15 a share we made a nice little base down here around $15.75. So right off, uh, you know, right there, I do want to add in another support. So we had enough strength that we didn't even need to pull all the way down here towards about $15. Instead, we saw buyer step in around $15.70. If you were trading this in the early morning, you could see that as a nice bullish signal buy in here and then see how it opens up and we take it as the market um, begins to unfold today. So as we uh, came into the uh, opening bell, we saw a lot of volatility along with a lot of volume traded here on Workhorse, WKHS. Uh, you can see here millions of shares traded each minute. And we saw a quick little uh, whipsaw all the way down to about 1650 and then all the way up here towards about 1825. But the specific level that I was focused on this morning was right in here around 1775. 
So we, we that was our pre-market high, and as we opened, we kind of zigzagged around it and then eventually pushed higher and had a bit of a double top right in here around eight feet, 1850. And then as we pulled back down, I was wanting to see if we could hold 1770, roughly, or 1775. And if we couldn't hold there, I was looking towards this bottom right in here around 1690. We did, in fact, bounce off of those pre-market highs around 1775. From there, we pushed. I noticed that we did have that resistance from just about 15 minutes prior. From there, we bounced, but we made a higher low. So note that we came all the way down, bounced off those pre-market highs. And then as we hit 1850, we made a higher low. From there, we broke through 1850, surged all the way up to $20 a share. From there, we saw a sharp sell-off. And you can actually see the spike in volume from where we were trading around 500,000. Um, and then we moved all the way up here to 1.5 million shares traded as we quickly sold to the downside. And now note, as we traded to the downside, we bounced off of 1850, but it was a really weak bounce. So this was a good indication that buyers are really nowhere to be found. And there's just a lot of sellers that are flooding the market, trying to get rid of their shares after this hefty move in the first couple of hours of trading. Uh, it was about 20% from the opening price. So that's a really big gain over the course of a couple of hours. Now, once we uh, saw that bounce and more sellers stepped in, we sold all the way back down. The level, again, that I was looking at was 1770. We just so happened to bounce, made it all the way up, couldn't even make it to 1850. And from there, I was a little bit leery if this would go back up and retest 20, that $20 high. Uh, you can see we actually sold back down in the second time that we bounced on 1770 or 1775. We saw more buyers than before step in. So that was a pretty bullish signal. But again, as we hit 1850, we could not break through it. And from there, we sold down. You can see it was just a slow bleeding of this stock price. We went from about 1850 all the way down to about 1650, so a 10% decline over the course of about a half hour, um, so or about an hour and a half. So that to me was a very poor sign. But then, as we are moving into the close, I guess the shorts were wanting to get out. People were thinking this thing is going to pump into the close, and we make another break towards 1775. We push all the way up and actually threw it towards 1785, but then we sell back down. And again, it was just a slow trickle. If you were in this, it was a it would have been real painful, right? It was a slow, slow decline. You slowly see your money just leaving. And at that point, you know, you may have went on to, wanted to cut your losses as we broke back down below 1770. We then saw a quick little surge into the close. But you can see here after hours, we have continued that push lower once again. So to me, some levels to look at. I mean, this is a pretty weak close, but some levels to look at on the downside, again, are going to be $16.50 a share. From there, it's going to be those pre-market lows around $15.75 a share. And then those highs from yesterday at $15 a share. Again, remember that we had that double top yesterday in the early stages in the morning and then the early afternoon and those will be our three levels of support now if we break down below that i think that this thing is going to have a lot more to give back if we start to see that quick waterfall selling to the downside as we move into tomorrow wednesday's trading now to the upside i would really like to see us consistently hold above 17 dollars and 70 cents or 1750 or 1775 a share if we can move above that the next key level and you can see it pretty clearly here on the five day five minute chart is 1850 and note that that is a pretty large uh, percentage gains about five percent and as this is a pretty liquid and pretty volatile stock it can quickly make that move in a matter of say five minutes to about 30 minutes uh, but just make sure that you have a plan in place if you're wanting to trade a setup such as that from there honestly we could quickly move up here to twenty dollars a share but be mindful as if we are pulling up to that level maybe set 
uh, some sells of your position below $20 a share because I guarantee you that people are going to be doing that, that as we approach today's highs, tomorrow, if that happens, that people are going to want to lock in profits before testing uh, that all-time high uh, just because they are, you know, they're wanting to lock in those profits. They don't want to risk that move that maybe is 10 cents, 20 cents. They'd rather, you know, pocket that dollar gain that they have or $2 gain rather than risk that 10 or 20 cent extra move. So just keep that in mind. It's something that I've learned through my trading, hopefully to pass on to other people. Um, but nonetheless, you want to make sure that you have a valid setup that you are not uh, just throwing lines up on the chart uh, that suit your desire for where you want the chart to move. Actually look at the chart from a non-biased standpoint, which is difficult to do if you personally own shares or you're short this uh, stock, uh, but try your best and maybe even ask uh, friends or, or other traders that you know what they think of the stock. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, please leave a like, leave a comment if you have an opinion on this particular stock or there's another stock that you would like for me to look at. So with that, guys, I will catch you in the next one.